Hi. Do I still need to talk anymore? It's, it's, it's a delightful to be in a city which loves food so much. This is, this is, this is the capital, yeah, food capital of the country, in the world actually. And this is where I really, I really realized food is not just life, food is not just love, it's not just the energy, it's not just the culture, it's a sheer hope. And I will share some of my story around around food and my journey throughout. Let me start with my, my a humble background. We were a family of 17 people um, living in the far end of the village. And one day at around four o'clock after school, I came back with my other three siblings, extremely hungry. And I remember that day, my grandmother served me water rice, very fondly we say pokhal. Basically it is, it is water with few grains of rice, which she saved from the lunch time. And I, I distinctly remember that is one of the most delicious, divine, and distinctive meal I ever had. And that stays in my, my mind. And I remember the, how this old lady understood the meaning of using the last grain of rice and feeding an empty stomach with so little resources. It's incredible. Let's move from my home to my neighbors. The extremely hardworking farmer. I remember how hard it was for her to irrigate her tomatoes in the in the and from the nearby you know well. It's a 10 feet deep well. She has to put the water out and it gets very nicely. And during the harvest season, the, the, the field looks marvelous. The red, amazing tomato all over. And once it is harvested, she wrapped it nicely, brought it to the market. And what she finds is incredible, overflow of tomatoes. And there is very few takers. The money she gets out of all the hard work she put is, is not even worth taking those tomatoes to the market. And what happens is it all goes to the landfill. It's, and later I realized it's not, she, she was not the only one. The millions of farmers around the world, this is the destiny of, of their produce and how food landed in the landfill. Do you realize that we in India, West, as much as food as the total United Kingdom consume. Try a wedding, you will realize. So it's it's like a forty percent of all the food we produce we throw away. Like out of seven bananas, you throw away three of them, just straight away, and it over fifty thousand crores of Indian rupees. Imagine the amount of schools we can build with that amount of money. So let's let's go to the, the global context. In 2007, Lai brought me to America, uh, to United States of America. Now I went to study economics there, basically learning economic theories and principles and applying them how to improve the livelihood of local community. There I confronted with a completely different world of food. Plenty of food. The average size, the person size in America is three times as much as anywhere they shop in the world. Plenty of food. On an average, 150,000 tons of food Americans throw away every day. 20% of the food they buy, they don't even touch it, they throw away. This is America. And this beautiful country gave me something very nice. My lovely wife. So, she's European, German, but her love for Indian food made it the trick. And that brought me 
to a beautiful Europe. In fact, the beautiful Belgium, it's a nice little country in the middle of Europe. It has amazing chocolate, great food culture. They have highest density of Michelin star restaurant. There I are exposed to the sophistication of food. Every piece of food they serve is like a fine jewel. It's amazing. It's, 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 you have to experience it. It's really great. Because they, have, they are in between you know, France, Netherlands, Germany. So they, they combine all these different food and they created their own. It's, it's incredible food. But there I was doing my PhD. It's a PhD on how to make food production more efficient and sustainable. And that brought me to see the other side of the food production. So I went, I visited around 50 odd food processing companies around Europe. And there I see the darker side of the food supply chain. Let me show you or let me give you a feel of how that looks. Look at, uh, this is just, we don't like the side part of the bread, bread we throw away tons of food. And this is chocolate, really delicious chocolate in Belgium. Why they throw away all these chocolates? This is from the West Bags. This is going to the landfill. They throw away this because it is slightly harder than it is required by the, by the supermarket which, which buy these things from the from the from the processor so tons and tons of chocolates are goes to the dustbin just because landfill just because they are not meeting the requirement these are drinks perfect quality what is the problem here wrong leveling somewhere somebody put the wrong levels on it and it all goes to the landfill it's it's really shocking it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a problem it's it's a, it's a human problem, it's a management problem, it's a management issue. You and me can fix it. Just our lack of respect is this. Look at this. This is one of the largest food process, food, fruits and vegetable processing company in the world. They supply fruits and packaged fruits and vegetables to, to, to different part of the world. Just look at the floor. So much mishandling and mis-leakages and, 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 and lying on the floor. This is and this is all going to the landfill. So what is important here is my next story, my favorite part of the story actually. I am very fortunate to work with, with a project where we were you know, helping the, the most important stakeholders in the supply chain, the farmers. We were helping them to increase the, the value addition at the primary production level. It's, it's very satisfying when you really work with people who grow your food. You interact with them, you work with them, you get to know them, how it feels to go to the field and how, what, it, what, what it requires. It's, it's very powerful. And more and more we are getting very far from those farmers and not listening what they really want, right? So it was really satisfying. So one day I was driving with my, 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 my hosts who is standing here, Dr. Edmond Kagambe, he is also a deputy vice chancellor of the local university. And we are driving through one of the most remote region. Um, it's, the name is called Bundubujia. It's near the uh, uh, Congo border, Democratic Republic of Congo. And we stopped by in a local shop to get some food. And what we found is tons of bananas just waited to be thrown away. And before even we ask, the shopkeeper was telling, sir, what can we do? There is no transport facility for us to bring these bananas to the bigger city. What can it? Then I asked, what about this Coca-Cola here? How it comes so easily here? No, no, there is no problem. Coca-Cola comes every time. We never have shortage of co <laughs> supplying Coca-Cola. That's fine. So what is, what is important here is, I, I show you one side of the story, how we treat food, right? How we deal with food. The other side of the story, do you know one in nine person of you and me, our hello human 
is going to bed hungry. One in four child is malnourished. At the same time, we throw away one third of all the food we produce. How do you justify this? How do you justify your fellow human being is hungry and you're throwing away tons of food? So food is, it's, it's, this hunger is not really a food problem. Hunger is a logistics problem. Hunger is a governance problem. Hunger is sheer lack of respect for food. That is the problem, how we deal with food. And that comes to what should we do now? What is the way forward? What we figure out that the way we currently operate, our whole operations is how do we, we behave? Traditionally, we behave in a very simple way. It's called linear model. What is linear model? We take resources, we make something, we use or we do not use, and we throw away. That's a very simple, we took some raw materials, we make out something, we use, and rest we dispose. It's a very simple linear model. What is needed to be done, and it means a lot of our resources goes to the landfill in different stages. What is needed to be done is little change in our mindset, and in our operations, in our behavior. And it's not difficult. Let me show you how. It, it needs a, just like the way, you know, we take, make, use, and dispose. We need to change these words. Remake, reuse, recycle, redistribute. Simple words. Let's see how it works. It's very, very simple. We can really use it in our day-to-day -day life, starting from here, from now. The same example, the same tomatoes my farmers throwing away every year. It's not that it's not happening, it's nothing new, but how we scale it up, how we do. So the same tomatoes can be dried up and preserved for later, or can be made in, in juice or some syrup. Okay, there is a difficult of logistics. Traditionally, the farmer bring it to the far market or the middleman, middleman bring it to the so the big processors and then they process it. Now, in our project we are developing is how we make the big processing into a small mobile unit. And bringing those mobile unit to the farm and they process it and then move on to the next farmer so that we reduce the whole transportation, storage and, and all the wastage. So this is just one example. Similarly, how many of you would like to buy the not so good looking carrot? So no food saving. <laughs> so so it's it's it starts with us. We do not like to buy this this not so good looking carrot, right? So that's why the the this, the supermarkets also they don't take it from the farmers. So ultimately, the poor little farmer has to suffer the loss, and they have to leave it in the farm. Is there a way we can valorize it? Can we make something out of those? Because there is no change in nutrition value, it just doesn't look good. So let's let's think what are the things we can do with those. You know? Similarly, this is another company, very interesting example. Say bread, the same bread goes to make beer. They brew the beer and uh, the, the, the bread and make beer out of this. Another example, the same chocolate could be nicely made retailer. Could be easily used. So just need a little bit of thinking, little bit of effort to change our mindset. Why to landfill? Why not use the value and make you use the whole? Similar, the drinks. I'm bringing the same examples which I took you. This, there's no, the, the, the quality of product is not wrong here. It's the, the leveling. So can we just redistribute it, donate it? There are, there are, there are several reasons. So it is not that straightforward that we can straightforward. With, we need to redesign our whole supply chain. That we re design our whole, you know, system how we are working right now and get the acceptance in the chain so that we can use, reuse, recycle, and redistribute. That we have zero waste in the supply chain. So this is another very interesting example. Now, this is this is this is called anaerobic digestion. It's creating or getting energy out of food waste. So this is also more and more happening. Also, you and me at our household level, 
simple food can be used as compost instead of just throwing away. We can use that in our own garden and make it a compost. So the change starts from you and me. So this is another very interesting example. It's a project we have we have done in Turkey. It's an olive factory. I will not spend a lot of time. Just a simple how not a single element of olive is wasted in the whole process. First, they process the olive. The dried part goes to you know the the, the, the skin part, the dried one used as energy, and then even that residual is made. Um, um, they make soaps out of this residue of the olives. So these are there are plenty of examples like this. But what is needed is the scale and the awareness and each each phases what are the different things we can we, we can we can do. Two to summarize the whole thing, friends. By 2030, we need two planets to meet our demand. And by 2050, we need three planets. So it's now up to us. If we want to give our, our children a good future, a nice life with good food, perfect Amrut Sarikulja, <laughs> here to start. Let's think the zero, let's think the circular, and we can meet the, uh, we, can, we, can, we can meet that target and have a very healthy and sustainable society. Thank you.